myself dr nandesh i'm from krishna vishwa vidyapeet the co-authors being dr kamal shah and dr kamal boyke come to the basic uh, male genital urinary embryology the urogenital system arises from the uh, intermediate mesoderm which forms a urogenital system on either side of the aorta the urogenital ridge um, uh, develops into three sets of tubular nephritic structures from head to tail the pronephrus mesonephrus and the metanephrus the pronephrus is the tail most set of tubes which mostly reaches the mesonephrus uh, is located along the mid section of pancreas and develops into mesonephric tubes and mesonephric duct the thin duct these tubules carry out some kidney function at first but then many of the tubules regress however the mesonephric duct persists and opens into the cloaca at the end of the embryo the metanephrus gives rise to the definitive adult kidney it develops from an outgrowth of the caudal mesonephric duct the urethric bud and from a condensation of nearby uh, renogenic intermediate mesoderm the metanephric blastoma the urethric bud where develops into ureter the mesonephric ducts uh, form retiestes nephrin ducts epididymis vasopril seminal vesicles and the trigone of bladder the urogenital sinus forms the bladder except the trigone and the prostate gland bulbourethral gland and urethra coming to main topic renal syndrome is a type of mesorectic or the pubic anomaly comprising of renal agencies its lateral seminal vesicles and the secretory duct obstruction it is a rare condition typically diagnosed during the third or fourth decade of life and often present with perineal pain becoming uh, prostatitis hematospermia painful ejaculation and infertility failure of emergence of the ureteric bud between the fourth and 13th peak of uh, gestational result in general syndrome there is an association between the congenital malformations of seminal vesicle and the ipsilateral upper urinary tract because both the ureteral buds and the seminal vesicles originate from the mesonephric or double pen duct mal development of the distal part of the mesonephric duct results in atresia of the ejaculatory duct leading to obstruction and dilatation of the seminal vesicle while an abnormality in the ureteral bud leads to renal agencies or dysplasia so the predecessor features will be unilateral renal agencies its lateral ejaculatory duct obstruction its lateral seminal vesicles and small testes and its lateral ureteral seal have been reported coming to my case uh, a 42 year old male came to the department with complaints of incomplete voiding there was no previous history of trauma or any documented evidence of mass lesion no previous imaging studies were available the ct and mri was done for the same patient coming to the ct we can note that there is agents of the right kidney and uh, ectopic ureter insertion was seen and also a seminal cyst seminal cyst cyst was seen MRI was done for the same patient. We can note a uh, right-sided renal agency, cystic dilatation of the seminal vesicle on the right side, dilatation of the uh, right side vas deferens from the posterior aspect of prostate extending into the right inguinal canal, dilated duct seen to inject the posterior wall of urinary bladder, right-sided uh, ectopic ureter opening into the va right vas deferens inferiorly. Superiorly, it had a blank lining. Left kidney was normal, and one note is that. high semen density within the duct on t1 method was probably due to high prodromous content as a result of stenosis the differential diagnosis of the same condition being seminal vesicular cyst should be differentiated from prostatic or uh, ureteral cyst bullerian duct cyst and ejaculatory duct cyst prostatic ureteral cyst an area of focal dilatation that occurs within the prostatic ureteral ureteral cysts are often uh, detected at the first and second decade of life always arising at from the level of of perimenopause and are always mid in the midline association of prostatic or uh, ureteral cyst with a variety of genital urinary abnormalities is recognized and they include hypospadiasis cryptorchidism unilateral region agencies mullerian duct cysts have no such association and they are usually seen in third or fourth decade the image shows subcentimetric midline hyperintense third isointense even Peripherally enhancing cystic lesion in the prostate gland, which demonstrates on sagittal images, giving a B-click extension towards the urethra. Coming to the Mullerian duct cyst, 
They arise from uh, remnants of Mullerian duck and is one of the midlife district mass in the pelvis, male pelvis. Mullerian duck cysts usually occur in third to fourth decade of life, whereas prostatic cuticle cysts they occur, occur in first and second decade. Mullerian duck cysts represent a focal incomplete duct regression and thus can arise anywhere along the path of Mullerian duct regression from scrotum to prostatic cuticle. The embryogenic origin also explains why Mullerian duct cysts are larger and often extend superior to the prostate gland, while the uterical cysts are usually smaller and are less likely to extend above the prostate gland. Muller induct cysts do not communicate with the urethra. Muller induct cysts are not associated with any other abnormalities, whereas the uterical cysts are associated with variety of genetic urinary abnormalities. Coming to the last of the ejaculatory duct cysts. Ejaculatory duct cysts are a rare type of cysts of the prostate gland. They occur due to obstruction of the ejaculatory duct, which in turn can either be congenital or secondary in case of inflammation. They are usually intraprostatic when small, but may extend supply when large. Seen as the round or oval regions, they tend to be in median or paramedian position in the prostate gland above the level of perimontanum, extending into the prostatic base. On MRI, T1, they appear as lower high signal intense and T2 high signal intense. These are the references. Thank you.